Hey there, awesome physics students. Let's do an example problem with friction on a box against a wall. So the situation is this. We have a box that we're pushing against the wall at an angle, and the box is held there by friction, and we want to find the normal force and the frictional force that's acting on the box. So um, to do that, let's use our problem-solving framework. Let's First, let's draw a picture of what's going on. Here's the wall, and here's the box, and the box is being pushed with a 60 Newton force up at an angle that is 30 degrees to the horizontal and the box has a mass of 5 kilograms okay and we want to find uh, two things we want to find the frictional force and we want to find the normal force from the wall on the box okay now we have our uh, picture let's draw a free body diagram for this uh, it's on the surface of the earth so it's going to feel gravitational force, which is mg. Uh, of course, it feels this applied 60 Newton force um, that is at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. Uh, it's touching the wall, so it's going to feel a normal force from the wall that's perpendicular to the contact surface of the wall. And uh, we wanted to find friction, so we're assuming that it could either slide up or down. We're going to say that it's not sliding, so this is going to be static friction, and we just have to choose the direction, either up or down. It's going to be parallel to the wall. I'm going to choose it to be up because intuition, my intuition tells me that it may tend to slide down without that force that would oppose it. Um, and in the end, when we solve for this frictional force, if it's positive, that means that we guess the correct direction, and if it's negative, that means it actually points the other direction. Okay, so I believe that's all the forces on it. There are no ropes or springs or there's no drag or anything like that. So I think that's good. Um, the next thing we want to do is identify the direction of the acceleration. The acceleration is zero in this case. So that means that we are, can, are free to choose any coordinate system. Let's just use a standard x and y coordinate system like this. And uh, so then the next step we want to do is actually sum the forces in the x and y direction. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start with the x direction. Let's so sum of the forces in the x direction. And for that, we get uh, the normal force is a positive component. And then we have these friction and gravity are in the y direction. They don't enter into the x direction. We want the horizontal component of the uh, 60 Newton force. That horizontal component is adjacent to the 30 degree angle. So we want to use cosine for that. So that's going to be. Uh, 60 cosine of 30 degrees and that points in the negative x direction okay and then I'm going to set this equal to ma in the x direction and, but a in the x direction is zero okay so this tells me that um, the normal force minus 60 cosine of 30 is equal to zero okay that's good now let's sum the forces in the y direction. We have some of the forces in the y direction are, uh, we have frictional force, which is up. That's FR, that's gonna be a positive component. We have gravity, which is down, minus mg. And then we have uh, part of this, the normal force is perpendicular, so that doesn't enter in. We need this, perp this uh, vertical portion of the 60 Newton force. That side is opposite to the 30 degree angle, so we want sine for that. And that one points generally up, so that's going to be a positive 60, and I want sine of 30 degrees for that. Okay, Those are all the forces in the y direction. I set that equal to ma in the y direction, but again, a is 0. All components of a are 0. And so this tells me that the force of friction minus mg plus 60 sine 30 uh, is going to be equal to zero, okay? So now at this point I want to count my equations, my unknowns. I have an equation here. I don't know fn. I know this stuff. I know zero. So I have one equation and one unknown here. That's good. Here I don't know the frictional force. I know gravity because I know the mass is five kilograms, so I know how much gravity is and I know all this stuff, so I have another equation and another one. So two equations and two unknowns, that's solvable. Okay, so let's take this force here, 
and solve for that one. That one's going to be, let me take the 60 and throw it on the other side there. So that's going to be uh, the force, the normal force is 60 cosine of 30 degrees. And I went ahead and punched my, this into my calculator earlier, and I found this to be 52 newtons. Okay. All right, and then let me go ahead and use algebra to solve for this one. Um, I'm going to add mg and subtract 60 sine 30 from both sides, and that will give me the force of friction is equal to uh, mg minus 60 sine 30, right? Because the 60 is positive here. When I put it on the other side, it becomes negative. Negative mg becomes positive mg. All right. Um, so I went ahead and punched this in my calculator too before and I found it to be a positive 19 newtons. So since it's positive, that means indeed the frictional force does point up like that. So that's good. Um, note, one more note on this. Uh, note that here we're taking friction, we're taking force of gravity minus 60 sine 30. If this weight becomes smaller, then this actually, this whole frictional force becomes negative. And in fact, if you use a two kilogram mass here, this term becomes small enough so that this, this 60 sine 30 is bigger and the frictional force becomes negative 10 newtons about. And that would mean that it actually points down to oppose this pushing force up, okay? And that makes sense because, you know, gravity is opposing this this push force, and if gravity shrinks too much, then we need friction then to come in and oppose that, that push force, okay? So that's good, that makes sense. Um, this term here, the normal force here, tells us that if I increase the value of this push force, so if I push harder on it, then the normal force is going to also increase, right? So if I push, makes a 60, like maybe, uh, let's say I double it to 120, that, then this is also going to double which makes intuitive sense, right? The wall is going to push back harder if I push harder. Okay, so I think I've done my sanity check, and that's it for this problem.